The new year is right around the corner. Most people are setting their financial goals for the year. So it's time for me to share our annual budget with you for 2023. Hey there, I'm Brittany Flammer, a financial coach with videos all about budgeting and money saving tips for you and your family. Now I do a budget every month, but at the beginning of the year, I like to do an annual budget. I don't spend a lot of time. It's not perfect, but it gives me a great overview of our budget and our money for the entire year. It's also what helps me to figure out how much money we have for fun stuff like vacations and what we can afford. I've got a spreadsheet very similar to my monthly budget, but I've created it for the entire year. So let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and start with income. Now, my husband is works full time. He is our primary breadwinner. He is a teacher, he's on salary, so he makes the same every month. So it's just under 5,000 each month. But if you'll notice in September, I have it going up to 5,200. Now he gets an annual, it's not an annual raise, it's like an annual cost of living increase. So it's two or two and a half percent. Um, but then also as a teacher, they get paid based on their education as well as their years of teaching and my husband has a doctorate but he's only been getting paid for having a master's because when he first started teaching he was not teaching in the field of his doctorate he was teaching in the field of his bachelor's and master's but now he's teaching classes in the field of his doctorate degree so they said that they would increase his pay starting next school year and so he'll be making more, but I don't know exactly, so I'm kind of guessing, but like I said, this is not perfect. It's just to give us an overview of the month, or of the year. Um, so this income is after tax income. So taxes have been paid, our health insurance has been paid, we've taken some money out for our FSA, our flex spending, we put money aside for our medical expenses, and as well as some of our retirement is taken out before he gets paid. So all of this is after taxes, after all of those expenses. So our take home pay for the year is gonna be just over $60,000. Now I have another line LLC. I have my business. I do make money off of YouTube ads, off of financial coaching, off of a few Etsy products that I have. Um, but it's very inconsistent. I don't know how much to expect each month. So what we do is we budget according to my husband's income and then anything I earn is like extra and we are focusing this year on paying off our mortgage. We're trying to get it paid off early. So anything extra we make is going towards our mortgage. So anything I make will be go towards our mortgage. So I'm not gonna include my income here because whatever we make will just go towards our mortgage. And then side income, my husband is like the handyman and can fix and do anything. And he, especially as a teacher, has like two months off in the summer. So he could make a lot of side income there, but we are doing, last year we did a ton of house projects. This summer, we are hoping to build on a garage with an apartment above it. So he will be spending all of his time as a contractor for that, doing that. So I'm not anticipating him making any extra money. So our total income will be 60,000. And then let's move on. Tithing, we pay 10% tithing on our gross income. We also pay some fast offerings and donate to some humanitarian, but it all comes out of one payment that we make. So I just call it tithing. So it's about 825, although I should, once he makes more money, we'll, I don't know, 850, I should change that. So it'll probably be about 850 a month. So we will be paying about $10,000 in donations. Um, mortgage, this is our mortgage payment, 1347 is our mortgage payment for the month. So I have that across the month, so it'll be over $16,000 towards our house. Um, electricity, I we have solar panels, so it's lower than usual. However, we didn't don't bank enough in the summer to cover the entire winter. So I am just guessing. It's not perfect. I'm just I use round numbers and I'm guessing on what I think it will be. So 30, 25, 25, then we go down, I put 15, 25. So I'm guessing about 225 for the year on electricity. Um, natural gas, this is they take the average for 12 months, so it's the same every month. 
So it's 86 a month. So we're looking at just over $1,000 for our natural gas. Water and sewer, ours fluctuates in the summer. It's a lot higher because we have a lot of yard do we water with sprinklers. And once again, I just, I looked at last year what we spent. I'm kind of guessing, it's not exact, but around $1,500 is, is probably what we'll pay, pay for the year. Then life insurance, this is term life insurance for me that we pay monthly. It's $11 per month. So it ends up being 132 for the year. Car insurance is fixed. We pay monthly. Um, we don't get a discount per, for paying every six months or once a year. So we pay monthly, um, $90 a month. Um, so it ends up being a little over $1,000. Our phone bill, $30 per month for both my husband and I. Our oldest, if you notice here in June, I increase it. Our oldest daughter is 13. She'll be turning 14. She'll be going to high school next school year. So we will get her a phone sometime this summer. I don't know if it'll be for her birthday, but before school starts, I don't know exactly how much it will be. I don't know if we're just going to add a line to the plan that we're on or if we, we've talked about buying like a gab phone or something like that. So we don't know exactly, but it will increase. So we'll be paying about $500 for the year in phones. Internet is a set price, $58 a month. So it will be just under $700 for internet for the year. Gas for our cars. I budget roughly 250 a month. So piano, we're currently 100 a month because we only have two kids doing it. Um, but then this summer, I am normally, we would have our kids do it, but we are doing several trips. Um, so I'm not going to have our kids do piano this summer. Um, and then I'm guessing all three will be doing it in the fall. Not sure. We'll see how that works out. Karate, $30 per month. This is one daughter does it. But then she has talked about there's some uh, city sports that she wants to try out. We just have each of our kids do one extracurricular. They do an inch, the older ones do an instrument and then we let them choose a sport, but we can't have them doing more than one at a time. There are just too many of them. There are five of them. Um, logistically, we just can't do more than one. And she wants to do either track or soccer for, with the city. So I, we will not be doing um, karate and then I probably won't have her do it over the summer. Um, and then I have her starting back in the fall. So that'll be 180 for the year. But um, the I don't have any expenses here because even if she does city sports, we have a sinking fund set up for our kids' extracurricular. So for non-monthly expenses, like when they register for soccer, we have a fund for that. So I don't have that in our regular budget right here. I'll show you later down on the sinking funds. Um, preschool, my youngest, it's 100 a month, and then he won't be going over the summer, and then he'll do preschool next year as well. I'm guessing 100 a month, that's assuming we stay at the same place, it's just a couple hours a week. Um, it might fluctuate if we went somewhere else or if he does more days a week, but I'm just anticipating keeping it the same. So that's $900 for the year. So total fixed expenses for the year is $36,500, which seems like so much money. Now we move on to the variable expenses. These are that you don't have to separate them. I just like to keep them separate because the fixed expenses, we don't have that much control over. The variable expenses, we have a lot more control over. Um, our grocery budget, this includes food and consumables like toilet paper, cleaning supplies, bathroom, any of that stuff. I lump it all together because I buy it all when I do grocery pickup or sometimes from Amazon, but pretty much from grocery pickup. So I have $6.50. It varies a little bit each month. And based on what we have room for in our budget. In the summer, I put it up to 750 because kids are home all day. My husband's home. We just spend more on food in the summer. And then it goes back down. So we're spending about 8250 roughly. And that, if um, we spend more on something else one month, it's the grocery is where I can cut or add to if we have the money or if we need to cut back, I do it there. Um, eating out, I just put 25 a month. This is for my husband and I to go out once. Um, kids money, this is our kids. They have a job system. They have charts and they can earn money. Um, so if they all do their stuff each month, it's about $50. Our oldest earns a lot more than the rest. It's based on their age, but our oldest earns a lot more because she now buys her own clothes, so she earns more. So that ends up being $600 a year. 
Um, my fun money, I get 25 a month. My husband gets 25 a month. I include mine right here. So that ends up being 300 a year for me. I include mine in with all of our variable expenses because I lump them all together. And so when I'm at Walmart or if I buy something off of Amazon, um, it, I just lump it together because I don't want to have to carry a separate debit card or ride, use a separate credit card or whatever for it. So I include it in with all these variable expenses. Babysitter, 25 a month. Um, our older two, oldest two are old enough to babysit. So we pay them, not very much, but we do pay them some to babysit for us. Ideally, my husband and I do a date every week. That doesn't really happen. So it's more like two or three times a month. Um, so total variable expenses for the year is just under $10,000. But now our savings or our sinking funds. This is where, this is what makes, this is what makes the budget work because these are all of those irregular expenses that expenses that come up, and I maybe didn't account for them in the budget, but we have money set aside. So emergency fund is the largest, but our emergency fund is fully funded, so we're not adding anything to it. Now, if we have to use money out of it, then we would add some, but. I don't anticipate adding anything to it. And if you want more detailed video on all of our sinking funds, I have a video, I'll have it playing right up there at the end. I go in detail about all of these. This is just a brief overview. Um, my husband's fun money, as well as his bike maintenance, we lump them together because he carries one debit card for his money. He, most of what he spends goes towards his bike or other electronics, so he, lump them into one. So that's 50 a month that automatically gets transferred to his account. So that's 600 for the year. Clothing. I used to have this in our monthly budget. I have just created this as a sinking fund. We're putting $50 a month towards clothing, which ends up being 600. I hand, we get, we have hand-me-downs for our boys. So my oldest son gets a lot of hand-me-downs from a cousin, which is amazing. Um, my daughters don't get as much, but we have a few neighbors that will sometimes give us hand-me-downs. Whenever they do, we take them. Our oldest daughter pays for her own clothing. We still buy like sh a few basic pairs of good quality shoes and underwear and socks, but um, she pays for her own clothing. I thrift, we repurpose. I used to sew, I don't really sew anymore. I will like mend stuff or cut off pants into shorts for the summer, which saves money, but um, 600 maybe doesn't seem like a lot. But um, I don't know. I think that that usually fifty dollars a month is what I put in. Back to school time, we tend to spend more. But I, so we'll see if it's enough or not. Fifty a month is what we're putting for the year. Then gifts, we generally it's teachers' gifts at the end of the school year and at Christmas, as well as a few wedding gifts in the summer. So we're just doing twenty five a month so that we'll have enough in there by May to pay for teacher gifts, and then enough for a couple of wedding gifts in the summer, and then by the end of the school year, we'll have enough for some Christmas gifts for teachers. Um, Christmas is its own category. We don't include that in, in with gifts. Life insurance, my life insurance is paid monthly. My husband's, we get a discount for paying yearly. So it, it ends up, it's 828 for the year. We just got a brand new policy so we set aside 69 each month so that when it's time, I think it's in October that we pay, we'll have enough in October in the account to pay. So we just do 69 every month. So it ends up being 828. Uh, vacation. Um, in my other video, I go into great detail about this. We are doing spending a lot more than normal on vacation this summer. And we're going at the very end of May, early June with our entire family overseas. So we are trying to front load our vacation as much as possible. So the first couple of months, we're putting as much as we can into our vacation, and then it's just whatever we have room for. So the last little bit, so we'll end up putting, we figured we need 2,500 to add into our vacation fund. So we'll end up putting 2,685 in there. So for next year, we'll have a little extra, or if we decide to do a weekend trip somewhere or something, we have a little bit of extra in there. Um, house maintenance. We do have some money in our house maintenance fund and we did not add anything for the first couple months because we are front loading our vacation. So we start out with 25 a month, then we switch to 50, then 100 as we get more, less money into our vacation fund. We have more money to play with and then my husband gets a raise. 
So we'll be putting 625, which is not that much, but we already have enough in our house maintenance to cover basic, basic stuff. Um, house updates. This is like very last in line of importance because this is just things we want to do on our house. So for most of the year, we're not adding anything. And then towards the end, when we have a little bit more wiggle room, we're adding some. So we'll end up adding 550. If we, do, my husband does do a side job or if our raise is more than what we think it's gonna be, then we can add more to it. But it's, like I said, we're spending a lot on vacation this year. We're not focusing on the other stuff. Car expenses, we just do 75 a month. And this will cover, this will double, this will cover all of our oil changes, car registration, licensing, as well as we have some money already in our car expense fund. We, so we are also going to buy new tires for our van. And so we should have enough to be able to do all of that with what we're adding. Christmas, normally I like to do a set amount each month, but we're putting so much into our vacation fund, we're doing zero for the first few months then 50, then 150. So it ended up being over $1,000 plus what we earn in cash back for our credit card for Christmas. Um, kids extracurricular. So this is non-monthly expenses. As you saw earlier, piano's already taken out, karate's taken out. This is more for sports, like in the spring, we'll register for track and soccer, or my daughter does club volleyball in the winter and she gets a discount if we pay it all up front. So we put 50 each month and then 75 and then up to 100. So we'll have just under $1,000 put aside for this for the year to cover all of those expenses. And this, and I think will be more than what we actually need. So if we end up not having enough in our clothing budget for back to school, we could pull some out of this fund because it's meant for kids. Um, extra mortgage payment. We used to put 150 towards mutual funds. Let me actually go ahead and delete this. We are not don't contributing to any mutual, well, we're putting away for retirement, but this, we were putting 150 towards mutual funds for a medium term, like in 10 year. Once we get our house paid off, we want to buy a rental property to rent out. Um, but right now we're focusing on paying off our mortgage. So that 150 we were investing, we're putting towards our mortgage. Um, so you can see right here, extra mortgage payment, 150 a month, which ends up being 1800 for the year. However, like I said, anything I make for my business, we will put towards the mortgage as well. Um, taxes for my business, we have a sinking fund for this. So whatever I make, 15% we put into taxes. So come April, if we need to pay anything, we have the money already there. Um, so I have nothing there because I'm not counting my income because it's so inconsistent but 15% of my income will go there. The rest will go to extra mortgage payments. Um, Roth IRA, this is not really a sinking fund, but it is savings. So this is the Roth IRA in my name. We're putting 275 a month, so the total will be 3,300. With money from my Roth IRA, my husband's Roth IRA, which comes out of his paycheck, and then his employer contribution will be at about 18% we're putting away towards retirement. So if you can see down here, it's not exact. I have an extra 274, 774, extra 12. Oh, I'm over 11, I'm over 21, 16. Since I changed something. Oh, I, cha I changed our, how much we're putting away, putting into investments. So I should decrease, either go in and decrease our groceries. Let's see what month. September, we're over 11. So I go in and decrease our groceries or I could decrease here, we'll decrease our vacation. We'll do 110, 80, 110. Okay, so it's not exact, but like I said, it's not about being perfect. I don't know that these income numbers, they're not exact for when my husband gets a pay raise. This is just to give me an overall so I know we have enough for all of our fixed expenses, all of our needs, and then the sinking funds are, the, that's the fun stuff. So I know that we have enough set aside for our vacations, for our car expenses. I just like looking at the overall big picture. I mentioned that video about our sinking funds, explaining them in great detail right up here. You can check that out, you can click there. Otherwise, if you want to see my monthly budgeting videos, I do a budget at the beginning of the month and a budget report at the end with exact numbers. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you get notified of my videos. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.